welcome to the March.net Sydney user group. Um, tonight we're doing a completely live, this is our first completely live user group of the year. Um, on, topic of the, on the topic of the coronavirus, we're going to be talking about um, the effects that the coronavirus is having on um, businesses. Adam Kogan will be coming up later, to, um, later after me and talking about um, the effects that it has on businesses and Jason Taylor will be coming up afterwards with tips um, of implementation on how to um, implement it into workplaces. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the current news and updates of the coronavirus to put us all on the same page so that we can kick this uh, session off with, um, with us all with the same information. So I'm going to talk to you guys about what the coronavi coronavirus is, how it came about, some current statistics and uh, the effects that it has on our daily life as normal um, outside of the workplace, um, how to reduce the spread, why it's important, and the vaccines that are potentially coming in the future. My name is Ruby Kogan. I'm Adam's daughter, and I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to start off tonight's talk with what the coronavirus is. So the coronavirus that we are currently dealing with today is, um, it belongs to a larger family of coronaviruses, and it's the same... Uh, virus strain which caused the SARS outbreak in 2002. The way this came about, uh, as many people may have heard on the news, we believe that the uh, first case and the way that it came about was through a wet market in Wuhan, China. The way that happened, uh, it's a pretty uh, difficult way to contract and create a new virus. Um, the the way wet markets work in China is we, there are live animals sitting on cages on top of each other. And if they were all domesticated animals with d diseases and the diseases were being spread through bodily fu functions, so uh, whether that's you know, uh, pooing or secretions of other kinds uh, being spread onto the animals beneath, that would be fine if there were two diseases and the human ate it and they were both domesticated animals. But they were wild animals that were, there was a mix of wild animals and domesticated animals and that combination of those two being eaten by a human we believe caused the first case. Um, the way this, uh, the reason why there are wild animals currently for sale in these markets which have recently been shut down is because it's a delicacy for the wealthy in China. I'll talk about that a bit later today, tonight. So speaking of wild animals, I was wondering if you guys could tell me who here has heard of a pangolin. If you can type yes or no in the chats uh, on the live stream, I've got one of the uh, AV guys here to uh, tell me how many of you guys have heard of the pangolin. This is what it looks like. So China actually does love its exotic foods. I've spent three months living in China. And one of, uh, one of my favorite nights, uh, we went to a, um, a wedding and they had this huge feast prepared for everyone. And uh, there was these huge barrel of turtles that they had, just live turtles. And I was really a little concerned as to what they were doing with those uh, huge barrel of turtles. But it turns out that they were gonna eat them. And so the uh, little baby live turtles were uh, killed in front of us to prove that they were fresh. And we did in fact eat those. Uh, because that's believed to be like a sign of wealth and class. So eating those wild animals is a, it's, it's like a delicacy. So that's why people do love to eat them. And it's uh, quite a culture there. As, so uh, what's the current stats? How many people do you reckon have heard of the... Uh, we've um, got a flurry of comments come in. And yep. we have 33% uh, say yes, they have. Okay, so not many guys have heard of a pangolin. So that's, they believe, one of the animals that are uh, secreted on another animal to cause this virus, a pangolin and a bat. So as of uh, today, which is March 18th, uh, 2020, we have 560 people with confirmed cases of coronavirus in Australia. It was, it was actually really huge in China, which is obviously where it started. There were 80,000 people with confirmed cases as of today. And as a statistic, one in 56 million cases, sorry, one in 56 million people had the case of a coronavirus, which is a huge amount of people, one in 50 people. But the reality is, it was a lot better. China, 
put 700 million people in lockdown to avoid this pandemic spreading further into their country because they realised very quickly how serious it was. However, other countries like Italy took a little longer to put these um, serious lockdowns in place and uh, they now have 31,000 cases, which is a lot less than China, but it's 520 people every million that have it rather than um, 50 out of a million. So it's really, really serious in other places in the world as a um, comparison statistically. So what is the effect that uh, this COVID-19 virus has on um, the, uh, what is the effect that it has on like current living in Australia? So, so far we are seeing from the government today and their announcements that shops and, and cafes will be shutting down soon. And um, the reason why these things need to be happening and why it did happen in China already is because this virus needs to be treated as what it is, which is a pandemic. And in order to, the thing with pandemics is it's really difficult to just stop them and isolate them to a point where they um, completely shut down. That is a process that happens over many years. But the best way to deal with it is to try or attempt to flatten the curve. And that's really important to flatten the curve of how many people get it rather than all in a very short period of a month or a few months. Because if the hospital systems in Australia and every other country in the world are not prepared to deal with the pandemic and uh, if this many people are coming in needing um, respiratory help and uh, being put on ventilators, we don't have the number of ventilators we need to be able to, um, to, be able to look after a huge influx of sick people. So trying to flatten how many people get it at one time will help the healthcare system deal with this because there are in fact other sick people currently filling up the hospitals on top of this virus. Um, some people are taking the virus less seriously than others. I know that nightclubs are still running and restaurants are still currently open because not all people are as worried about this as others. Uh, young people are just in reality not dying. 0.02% of cases, 0.02% um, of people that get this case in under 18s are actually dying from it. So the reality is for young people, it's not, it's not as serious, but in, over, in 80 year olds and over, 20% of people are dying. So in speaking of why it's really important to reduce how many people are getting it and to reduce how quickly it's happening, um, we need to make sure that we are putting in some systems in place on how to do that. The most important thing right now before the government is putting in lockdowns, things that you can do for yourself and for your family is social distancing. And that means a couple things. It means not shaking hands, um, it means washing your hands when you arrive places, cleaning your phone more regularly than usual, practicing basic hygiene to a very, very high standard, uh, not, catching public, not catching public transport if you can avoid it because um, there have been cases where it's, uh, it's been caught from a bus. Um, um, so making sure that you are reducing, if you have a job where you can work from home, which many people in the technology industry can, uh, it would be for your best interest um, and for the country's best interest to currently do that. So, we've currently invented some, uh, the Wuhan, the city where this originated, invented something called the Wuhan Shuffle. Can you come up and uh, demonstrate the, what it is? So, ready? Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to see you today. We didn't, we, there's no shaking hands allowed anymore. We should be trying our best not to make um, contact with hands because what you, what happens? You want to do it with the skip? I did it with the skip. You didn't do it with the skip. Okay. Thank you. Okay. He's very uh, um, active in, in the shuffle. It's a lot of shuffling involved. So um, the way the reason why that's important not not shaking hands. We've actually been talking about this for a few years uh, separately to this virus is. Um, there's a lot of germs that are spread, like obviously from human to human contact, your hands are touching everything and they're not, you're not cleaning them as often uh, as well, I guess you should. And you touch something, if you've got, someone else has got a virus on their hands and then you touch it and then you touch your mouth or your nose or your eyes, you now can very easily get the virus from there. So that's why it's really important to not be shaking hands, keeping your distance from people um, if you cannot work from home. So, the reason why self-isolation is really important is, so I've talked about why it's really important. Um, 
So the question is, what is why is it important to self-isolate rather than just social distancing and, um, and just putting in some basic hygiene practices? And that's because if... So, so far, the government hasn't put in very many proactive measures to stop this or reduce the spread. A lot of the measures they put in place are reactive measures, which means when a case has been found in a school, a school has been shut down. But the reality is that we need to be... Uh, if there is a case in a city, the schools, the universities and the workplaces in that area should be shutting down as soon as that case occurs rather than waiting for it to happen in their workplace, in their school, because it's, once it's been confirmed in the school, it's more than likely already flooded around the school, flooded around the workplace, and it's very, very difficult to um, maintain the spread once it's already spreading to large, large groups of people. On, on, in saying that, the testing process is really hard. So it takes three days for results to get back. The testing clinics have six hour long lines. And um, so that you don't need to go through that, so that the healthcare system doesn't have that sort of pressure. If you can stay at home, stay away from school and work from home, it can put a lot, it can reduce the stress of this virus on the healthcare system, which is really important, otherwise it will collapse. So some people have been talking about vaccines and if this will go away in a few months once the vaccine has been created. Um, they are currently in the process of creating a vaccine. They have put more time and effort and are further into creating this vaccine than any other virus in history. They've never done it this quickly. They've never put this amount of resources in. I think the world is doing their best to create a vaccine, but it takes 12 months as a minimum from start to testing to finish. And we can't rely on a vaccine to deal with the solution and we have to put in our own measures to make sure, to make sure that um, the spread of the disease is reduced as much as possible. So, in conclusion, please make sure that you are working from home if possible, making sure that you're practicing basic hygiene, social distancing, to make sure that the spread on the health, the strain on the healthcare system is reduced as much as possible. Thank you and up you come, Adam. Adam.